France and Italy are building a 26 billion euro railway across the Alps, uniting the two countries, boosting their economies, and impacting the environment. France and Italy are the third and fourth largest economies in Europe and each other's second largest trading partners, exchanging more than 111 billion euros worth of goods in 2022. As a result, establishing a high quality transport link between the two countries is of vital economic importance. However, this is a challenge, primarily due to the Alps mountain range, which spans the entire Franco-Italian border and rises over 4.8 kilometers above sea level. To cross this behemoth of a geographic feature, in the 1850s, the Kingdom of Sardinia began construction on the Victor Emmanuel Railway between Culo and Turin. Over the following years, construction advanced, and in 1860, the Treaty of Turin handed over the Duchy of Savoie and the County of Nice to France. Then, in 1871, construction on the 13.7 kilometer long Fréjus rail tunnel finished, and the railway finally opened, uniting the territories of France and Italy. In the early 20th century, the railway's single track was doubled and electrified, and since then, it has been renovated repeatedly. Despite this, the railway is still seriously outdated. Its small tunnels have low maximum allowed heights, limiting the size of trains that can pass through. In addition, the railway has many sharp curves, forcing low travel speeds. Furthermore, it has a very poor profile with a maximum gradient of 3% and a max elevation of 1,338 meters, forcing trains to double or triple their locomotives simply to pass through. On top of all this, modern safety regulations prohibit passenger and freight trains from passing each other in the Fréjus rail tunnel, generating a major transport bottleneck. Lastly, the route's passage through the steep Marianne Valley exposes it to landslides, one of which occurred in August 2023, forcing the railway's closure until summer 2024. Due to all these issues, most freight and passengers traveling between France and Italy currently travel by truck or airplane, with a total of 3 million trucks passing between the two countries every year. However, this is both energy inefficient and bad for the environment. As a result, in 1990, the French state-owned railway company SNCF introduced the idea of constructing a high-speed rail line between Lyon and Turin. And only a year later, the Alpine nations ratified the Alpine Convention, with the goal of limiting road transport through the mountains in favor of developing modern rail transport. The 1999 Mont Blanc Tunnel Fire, which resulted in 39 deaths, further reinforced this decision. In 2001, the Lyon-Turin rail link design was drafted, and in 2005, it was incorporated into the EU's Trans-European Transport Network. Finally, after over a decade of planning, on January 26, 2017, the parliaments of France and Italy ratified an international treaty to build the railway, officially authorizing construction. While improving infrastructure in uniting countries is important, what's also important is supporting the mental health of those countries' populations. That's why I've partnered with today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful, unbiased advice. However, BetterHelp also knows that sometimes starting therapy can be hard. That's why with BetterHelp, you can schedule therapy sessions without any face-to-face -face interaction via phone call, video chat, or even messaging at a time that is convenient for you. And if your first therapist isn't a match, no worries. BetterHelp has over 30,000 therapists in their network, so you're bound to find the right match. Your mental health is incredibly important, so it's worth giving it some time and attention. And even if you're currently in a good spot mentally, there's always room to improve and grow. To join the over 4 million people who have used BetterHelp to live a happier, healthier life, click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com futurology to get 10% off your first month. Thank you, BetterHelp. And now, back to the video. The Turin-Lyon railway will span 270 kilometers between France and Italy. It is split into three sections. On the French side, it will begin along the outskirts of Lyon, where it will link up with France's LGV Sud-Est high-speed rail line, which continues on to Paris in the north, and the LGV Rhône-Alpes in Méditerranée, which runs to Marseille in the south. 
The railway will then follow the A43 motorway before splitting off and passing through a 23 kilometer long tunnel underneath the Chartreuse Mountains, and another 20 kilometer long tunnel under the Beldon Mountains, before reuniting with the A43 motorway until the town of Saint-Jean-de-Marienne. By avoiding the population centers of Aix-les-Bains and Chambaret, this route will help reduce noise for local residents and remove any risks of polluting the pristine Lac du Bourget. On the Italian side of the railway, it will begin in northeast Turin, where it will link up with Italy's AV high-speed rail line, which continues on to Milan and down the Italian peninsula. The railway will then wind up into the Alps before stopping at the town of Busoleno. Lastly, the railway's third segment is the international section between Maurienne in France and Busoleno in Italy, which is being managed by a joint French-Italian international venture called TELT. It will span 70 kilometers and will feature the 57.5 kilometer long Mont d'Amban base tunnel, which will be the longest rail tunnel in the world, 0.4 kilometers longer than the current world record holder the Gotthard Base Tunnel in Switzerland. 45 kilometers of the tunnel will be located in France, while the other 12.5 kilometers will be in Italy. It will have twin tubes with a diameter of 8.4 meters each that will be connected every third of a kilometer. It will also feature four 500 meter deep ventilation shafts, passenger evacuation rooms, an underground service and rescue station, and fire mitigation and smoke extraction systems. Lastly, to excavate the tunnel, seven tunnel boring machines will be used except for a five kilometer section of schist metamorphic rock, which will be removed with traditional drilling and blasting. The new Turin Lyon link will be a standard gauge railway with the EU's ERTMS signaling and control technology used for both passenger and freight. It will have a maximum gradient of only 0.125%, compared to 3% for the old line in a maximum altitude of only 580 meters, compared to 1,338 meters for the old line. In addition, the route will have much wider curves than the old railway. All this will save energy costs and allow for faster travel, with heavy freight trains traveling at 100 kilometers per hour and passenger trains traveling at 220 kilometers per hour, which is just slightly less than the 250 kilometer per hour threshold used by the EU to define high-speed rail lines. In total, the project will cost 26 billion euros, 8.6 billion of which is for the Mont d'Amban base tunnel. The tunnel will be co-financed with the EU covering 40% of costs, Italy covering 35%, and France covering the remaining 25%. The other 17.4 billion euros for the French and Italian sections of the project will be covered by their respective governments. Further out, the new Turin Lyon link is an integral part of the Mediterranean corridor of the EU's Trans European Transport Network, or 10T, which runs from Spain in the east to Hungary in the west. The new Turin-Lyon railway link will provide many benefits for France and Italy. First of all, it will increase rail capacity and transport speeds, will support trains of up to 1,500 tons compared to 700 tons today, and will result in 40% net energy savings. These incentives will result in an estimated doubling of rail traffic along the Modena corridor, generating 500 million euros in annual economic benefits while boosting the regional economy. In addition, the railway will link up with France and Italy's high-speed rail networks, slashing travel times across the region. Turin to Lyon will be only 1 hour and 47 minutes, compared to 3 hours and 47 minutes today, and Paris to Milan will be only 4 and a half hours, compared to 7 hours today. Furthermore, by diverting a potential 25 million tons of freight traffic from road to rail every year, the railway will positively impact the environment. While its construction will generate an estimated 10 million tons of CO2 emissions, once opened, it will remove an estimated 1 million trucks off the roads of the Alps every year. 
preventing CO2 emissions equivalent to that of a city of 300,000 residents. This will offset construction emissions within 15 years, and over the railway's 120-year lifespan, will prevent a predicted 105 million tons of net CO2 emissions. Lastly, the project will increase the bond between France and Italy, contributing to European unity. While the new turin lyon railway will generate many benefits, there has been some criticism. First of all, locals have expressed concern about the impact that drilling, concreting, and washing will have on the region's precious alpine water resources. In addition, it is worried that construction will damage ecological sites and that the excavated rock will end up being dumped in the region's forests. However, this has already been accounted for, with 65% of excavated material being reused within construction and the remaining 35% being put into storage. Lastly, many believe the project is simply too expensive and that funds should be redirected towards improving the current infrastructure. This opposition has formed on both sides of the border, but is most active in Italy, where a movement called No TAV has campaigned against the project numerous times. However, despite this local resistance, the project's predicted benefits have outweighed the costs, causing work to progress. Since construction was authorized in 2017, the turin lyon rail link has advanced significantly. In 2016, excavation of a 9-kilometer section of the mont en base tunnel began prior to official approval, under the label of reconnaissance work. By 2019, it had finished on budget and on schedule, representing 8% of the final tunnel length. By June 2020, 2.8 billion euros of construction contracts had been signed, and by September 2021, and an additional 3 billion were signed, covering 80% of the tunnel length on the French side, which will take three years to excavate. By April 2022, excavation of another 1.5 kilometers of tunnel was completed, and in December 2022, drilling and blasting commenced on another tunnel section. In August 2023, work began on the French entrance to the mont tunnel, and contracts were awarded for the 25 kilometers of tunnel excavation on the Italian side. Lastly, on December 18, 2023, the tunnel construction site on the Italian side opened. As of January 2024, there are 11 active work sites involving 2,500 professionals at work many of whom are preparing for the five tunnel boring machines arriving in 2024. Over the following years, the mont en tunnel will be excavated and the turin lyon railway will be constructed. By its planned opening in 2032, the new link will unite France and Italy, boosting their economies and positively impacting the environment. If you enjoyed this video, it would be amazing if you like and subscribe to Futurology for more videos very similar to this one. Thanks for watching and see you next time.